again everyone. Um, something a little bit different this week as we look at the environment from the perspective of the First Peoples of Australia, uh, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Now beside me here uh, you'll see the, uh, the flags of, of both of them. Um, and the first thing to note is that they both symbolise the relationship between the people and the land. Uh, the black, yellow and uh, red of the Aboriginal flag uh, represents the people, uh, the yellow disc of the sun and the red earth. The green, blue, black and white of the Torres Strait Islander flag represent the land, uh, the sea, the people and white uh, represents peace. Now, both peoples have lived sustainably in Australia and the islands to its north for at least 60,000 years, a bit longer than us. Uh, in their worldview, and, and that of many indigenous cultures across the world, the land is something to which they belong, uh, and something to be cared for. Now this is an actually in, in, in quite sharp contrast to the Western European view, uh, worldview of the land as something to be owned and exploited. Now also in the worldview of Western Europeans uh, in the 18th and uh, 19th centuries, the world actually belonged to them, or to whichever one of them uh, first laid claim to so-called new territory. This worldview made them incapable of appreciating that the takeover of another people's homeland by force was in fact an invasion. We all fear invasion by others, uh, not only because it threatens our survival, but also because it threatens our culture and uh, way of life, our values and our world view. Uh, recall from Module 3 how our central values and worldview are fundamental to our sense of self. In the years since the invasion, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have been obliged, whether they like it or not really, to adapt to a dominant culture and value system that is still very much that of the Western world. Now it's a pity that the adaptation has been so one-sided, for non-Aboriginal Australians still have much to gain from aspects of traditional Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander worldviews, uh, not the least of which is a respectful and spiritual relationship with the natural environment. Now clearly I'm not an Aboriginal person. Uh, my country, if you like, uh, it seems, uh, is Kent in England. Now in researching for this foreword, I actually learned a great deal and this knowledge has enhanced my understanding and respect for Aboriginal culture, and I certainly hope it does the same for you. Referring to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander uh, people, uh, I've discovered, is, is a bit like referring to European people, kind of misleading. At the time of the invasion, there were many hundreds of Aboriginal uh, groups or, or nations living in, in defined ancestral lands all across this continent and in the islands to the, to the north of the, of the continent, the Torres Strait Islands. All these groups and the people in the groups had a deep connection to the land and also a kinship system that ensured that no one was ever isolated. Uh, there are lessons for Western culture in both of those. The exact customs and traditions, though, uh, varied greatly across different groups. Nowadays, uh, Aboriginal people are widely dispersed in contemporary Australian culture, and many now participate quite successfully in that culture. Unfortunately, though, the mainstream media emphasises problems rather than successes, and only rarely uh, does it contribute to a better understanding of traditional Aboriginal culture and the good things it has to offer all of us. A recurring theme, even amongst those Aboriginal people who are now successful participants in the dominant culture of contemporary Australia, is a desire not to lose their Aboriginal heritage. This is something we should all be able to appreciate, seeing we've studied all about the importance of worldview uh, and uh, uh, its central beliefs and values, and how important these are to our sense of um, meaning and identity. Although non-Aboriginal, 
I can appreciate the importance of connection to country because I feel a, a close connection to the land uh, as well. I can also understand how it could be an intensely painful experience to see one's ancestral lands covered in houses and concrete and bitumen. Indeed, that's my experience now of the place where I grew up. No trace of it anymore. The modern Western style of housing, after all, is not in any way harmonious with the land. It actually uh, goes out of its way to smother the land completely. How many other non-Aboriginal people out there, or, or even Aboriginal people for that matter, have any real sense of what this connection to land actually means? Do you?